Hi everyone, welcome back to the OPD Essential series on Medi Lectures and in this lecture we will discuss how to approach a patient with edema. So edema refers to swelling due to accumulation of fluid in interstitial compartment. To discuss the causes, we will discuss the mechanism of edema in brief. Let's suppose this is the heart, this is the left ventricle, this is the left ventricle. So blood is traveling in aorta, then arteries, arterioles, these are arteries, then capillaries, venules, veins and finally to right side of the heart. This is right atrium and blood is finally coming to right ventricles. So for sake of understanding, we have draw this simplified figure. Now the plasma from capillaries moves to the interstitial compartment for delivery of nutrients and oxygen etc. So there is movement of fluid from plasma to the interstitial compartment. This is interstitial fluid. Now this fluid returns back to the venules and additional amount is transferred back through the help of lymphatics drain to the lymphatics and finally these join to the veins and finally these are drained to the right ventricle. Now there are some pressures acting for this transfer of fluid from intravascular compartment to interstitial compartment. So first one is hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure of intravascular compartment. This helps in transfer of plasma to the interstitial fluid. Then there is colloidal osmotic pressure which helps in taking the fluid from the interstitial compartment back to the intravascular compartment. Now, if excess of interstitial fluid develops, this is termed as edema. So, what can be the various causes of edema? So, edema can develop <clears throat> if either there is increase in intracapillary hydrostatic pressure, now this can occur in fluid overload states in which heart will be pumping more of fluid. So there will be increased hydrostatic pressure. These fluid overload states can occur with renal failure, both acute as well as chronic renal failure. Then there can be reduction in plasma oncotic pressure which can occur due to protein malnutrition, chronic liver disease or with nephrotic syndrome. Then there can be inadequate lymphatic drainage which can occur due to obstruction, due to any infection, trauma or surgery. Finally, there can be damage to capillary endothelial barrier leading to its increased permeability which can again occur with infection and sepsis. So all these are the various causes of edema. Now once there is accumulation of fluid in interstitial compartment alongside the fluid in intravascular compartment diminishes. Now this decreased intravascular pressure is then sensed by kidneys especially the juxtaglomerular apparatus leading to activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system which leads to increased sodium and water retention and further accentuation of edema. So these are the initial causes which can lead to development of edema. Then decrease in intravascular pressure sensed by kidneys will lead to accentuation of edema. When we consider the various causes of edema, these can be divided into generalized edema, localized edema and some other causes. So cardiac failure is one of the most common causes of generalized edema and usually right heart failure will lead to edema. Then hepatic causes like chronic liver disease, chronic liver failure, there will be decreased protein synthesis leading to decreased plasma oncotic pressure. Similarly, in nephrotic syndrome, increased protein loss will lead to decreased plasma oncotic pressure. 
chronic renal failure will increase the hydrostatic pressure leading to edema drugs which can lead to generalized edema include NSAID then glucocorticoids anti diabetic drugs like pioglitazone and calcium channel blocker like amlodipine so these drugs cause edema due to various mechanisms nutritional causes leading to decreased protein leading to decreased plasma oncogenic pressure then localized edema can due to thrombophlebitis which is the inflammation of blood vessel there will be inflammation of capillary leading to increased leakage of protein varicose veins dvt primary venous wall failure will lead to venous blockage and additional interstitial fluid cannot be drained similarly lymphatic obstruction will also lead to edema some other endocrine causes include hypothyroidism hyperthyroidism and cushing syndrome especially the iatrogenic cushing due to excessive glucocorticoid use now it is important to note that hypothyroidism and hyper both will lead to non pitting edema so these are the various causes of edema now let's come on to the most important part that is how will we approach a patient in opd so most important thing is we have to take relevant history so we will ask what is the duration of edema whether it is acute or chronic so acute causes of edema can be due to infections while chronic are due to some chronic underlying disease like heart failure chronic liver failure renal failure etc what is the location whether edema is unilateral or bilateral localized or generalized and most important thing is the initial distribution which can identify the cause so in heart failure if the patient is ambulatory initially the edema will develop in legs if the patient is bedridden there will be presacral edema similarly nephrotic syndrome initially there is edema around the eyes which is periorbital edema increase in the morning hours more profound in the morning hours and later it become generalized what is the distribution of edema in svc obstruction it is restricted to face neck and upper chest upper chest and upper extremity so this initial distribution of edema can identify the cause then we'll ask any dyspnea with exertion orthopnea or history of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea this will be suggestive of heart failure as the cause then ethanol use changes with position ethanol use can identify chronic liver disease as the underlying cause then if the edema is changing with position so cardiac edema as we have seen becomes prominent in the dependent position so in standing it will be in lower limbs while in supine position it will be in presacral area we'll ask whether the patient has any uremic symptoms or not like decreased appetite nausea vomiting any features suggestive of encephalopathy then pain or associated symptoms can be present in thrombophlebitis cellulitis dvt history of any medication use which can lead to edema like nsaids steroids antihypertensives like amlodipine past medical history is also very important including any cardiac renal liver or thyroid disease once we have took the relevant history then we'll move on to the physical examination so we will confirm whether the edema is generalized or localized generalized edema is termed as anasarca while localized edema can be due to localized causes like thrombophlebitis deep vein thrombosis etc then symmetry what is the extent and severity of edema we have to see on examination on palpation we will confirm whether the edema is pitting or non pitting so causes of non pitting edema we have already discussed hypothyroidism hyperthyroidism also filariasis causes lymphatic obstruction is also a cause of non pitting edema then we'll see whether there is tenderness warmth or edema suggestive of inflammation jvp in cases of right heart failure will be elevated then blood pressure will be elevated in chronic renal renal failure or acute renal failure jaundice presence of palmar arrhythmia spider angiometer can be suggestive of chronic liver disease 
Flapping tremors can be suggestive of both hepatic as well as uremic encephalopathy. The underlying disease can be a cause of edema. So chronic liver disease in this case and chronic renal failure can be the underlying cause of edema. Now what all basic investigations will you order? First of all CBC to rule out anemia which can lead to hyperdynamic state, increased hydrostatic pressure. Then LFT with serum albumin is very important, RFT is very important, thyroid function test to rule out thyroid disorder, ECG to rule out cardiac edema, then USG whole abdomen to rule out both uh, renal disorders as well as liver disorder. Finally, if there is any localized cause of edema, we will do color doppler of limb to rule out any deep vein thrombosis etc. Now finally coming on to the approach. So once a patient with edema comes to you in the OPD, first you will see whether the edema is localized or generalized. So localized edema, you will rule out the causes like thrombophlebitis, DVT, any infection, lymphatic obstruction, venous obstruction and so on. If the edema is generalized, the first step is to rule out hypoalbuminemia. So hypoalbuminemia defined as serum albumin less than 3 gram per deciliter this can be due to cirrhosis, nephrotic syndrome and severe malnutrition. Severe malnutrition leading to protein deficiency. So this hypoalbuminemia has to be ruled out with the help of history, physical examination and lab test. Once this is ruled out, we will see whether there is any evidence of heart failure. So on examination, if JVP is raised, on auscultation, we can hear S3, S4 gallop, any ECG findings, brain natriuretic peptide and echo can be utilized to rule out heart failure. If heart failure is also ruled out, then we will see what is the urine output and the renal function of the patient. If there is significant oliguria or anuria, we will order RFT, USG KUB and urine analysis to rule out renal failure. So this is in short approach to a patient with edema. I hope you like this lecture. Thank you so much.